We've seen NetStat gives us some statistics if we use the minus S option. So NetStat, the network's data showing statistics. What are the two transport protocols which are common? Everyone should remember the two common transport protocols and you'll see here TCP and UDP. Right? TCP is very common. Most of the applications we're using in this lab use TCP. When we secure a shell into another computer, access a website, you send emails. TCP, before we send data, we set up connections. So here the stats say there are seven active connection openings, 72 passive. Active is usually when we initiate the connection open, passive when someone connects to us. Your stats will be different from mine on your computer. So TCP, we set up a connection, transfer data, and then close the connection. So one thing we commonly want to look at is what connections do we currently have open? Who's currently connected to us? And in fact, NetStat can show that. If you run the command, and I'll do it here so I can zoom in a bit better, and on computer 10, NetStat minus T shows us the TCP connections. And I'm going to use, again, the minus N because I want the no nicknames. I want the raw addresses. The minus T option, show me the TCP connections, the current ones. And here, in this case, I'm on computer 10 here, it shows me there is one connection. So NetStat minus T, show me the current TCP or the active internet connections. And the two well, three columns of interest are the local address, foreign address, and state. The protocol is TCP because I set the minus T option. Local address, note that it has two addresses. There's an IP address. That's me, 10.10.16.210, because I'm actually logged into computer 10 now. And a port number, port 22. And the foreign address is another computer, 10.10.16.201 and a port number as well. So the addresses contain both IP address and port number and the state says that this connection is currently established. We're connected right now. The state may change. Normally what happens when you finished communicating, you, the state, the connection closes but it actually stays temporarily open for a couple of minutes so it, then it fully closes. You'll see some other states like time wait here. If I connect to another computer, I'm currently on computer 10. How do I connect to another computer? What's wget do? Everyone remember? Get a web page. And every computer in this lab runs a web server, so I can get the web page of computer uh, 221. WGET just downloads the web page. From computer 21, I'm going to visit their website, save the file to index.html in this case. So I don't want to show you the page, I just want to download it. WGET does that. And now if we look at NetStat, I've got the original connection between computer 10 and computer 1, and there was another connection from computer 10 to computer 21. Because WGET uses HTTP to access a website, and HTTP uses TCP as the transport protocol. So this shows me I recently, computer 10, using port 53463, contacted computer 21 on port 80, the state is time wait. The connection is not established. This normally means that we've, we established the connection, we transferred some data, we closed the connection, and then we're just waiting it for it to fully close. We wait a couple of minutes before, uh, so in, just in case there's some extra communication. So time wait means we're waiting for it to close. 
after I think a couple of minutes or not so long it disappears. So you see the connection from my computer to computer 21 is no longer there. It, it's fully closed now. So netstat minus t gives us some information about our current connections, TCP connections. We can often estimate or guess who, what application is being used by the port numbers. Port 22. What server uses port 22? Easy one. What server uses port 80? HTTP or a web server. So HTTP uses port 80. So that, this line tells me I connected to a web server. The 53463 port is allocated by the operating system to my browser, wget, but port 80 is usually fixed and used by a web server. So when I see this, I know I recently contacted a web server. Here, what's this data? I'm still connected to port 22. What do you think port 22 is? SSH. Remember, I secured shell into another computer. There's a secure shell server. Web server uses port 80. Secure shell uses port 22. Good ones to remember. If you can't remember them, there's a file on your computer that reminds you. It's in the etc directory. It's called services. Have a look in the file. It's just a text file that lists the port numbers and the, the server names or the services. Have a look in slash etc services. So when there's a quiz question, what, what is the port number for FTP or for SMTP, you'll look up this file and see the answer. We see SSH is port 22. HTTP port 80. And some others you may recognize over time. 443 is down here somewhere. HTTPS, when we connect to a secure web server. Different port numbers used. While we're looking at text files, let's look at one other. Slash etc slash protocols. What's the protocol number for TCP? What is the protocol number for UDP and others? Look in the file and it will remind you. The protocol number, a list in the protocols file. IP is 0, ICMP is 1, TCP is 6. UDP is 17. The common ones we'll see. Transport protocols are given numbers. But there are many others here as well. Those files are typically on Linux operating systems in that location so that software can look them up. So what you should do is contact some other computers, either secure shell into them, access their websites, and then look at netstat minus t to see the, the connections. Netstat minus t. What if I access the ICT server? Using my web browser, links. Because I'm logged into computer 10, I don't have a graphical interface. 
So I'm sitting at my computer, but I'm actually secure shell into computer 10. I can't open Firefox, not without other settings. So I'll use my text-based web browser, links, access ICT, and it takes me to the ICT server. We visit Moodle. Does, do I want to accept cookies? Yes. Let's allow that. And now I'm on the Moodle website. Now let's quit. Yes, I'm sure. And look at our connections. Uh, my connection disappeared there. In that case, links closed the connection immediately after I ended. So not a good example. Even better. Let's try this one. Use wget. That's better. Try it again. Links closed the connection and deleted the connection state straight away. So that wasn't a good example. But wget, download the ICT web page. Look at netstat. And I see in there, because I just did it twice, there were two connections to the ICT server. I know that the ICT server has a special IP address or a local IP address of 10.10.6.11. It's just upstairs on the third floor, the server. So these were my two connections to the ICT server. If I connect again, then there's another connection. And they're in the time wait state because the connection's been closed, but it's waiting for a couple of minutes for it to, to fully close. Whereas with links, it fully closed it straight away, so I didn't see it. So cannot contact some different servers and see the output with Netstat. 